In this segment, we'll look at how to configure some settings. So for configuration, we can click on ProCare Home, Configuration, System. We're going to go to the Locations and Users, At Regions and Schools, I'm double-clicking. Whenever possible, set things at the region level instead of the school. If you do have multiple schools and there is an option for both the region and the school, the school would trump the region. So if you just have one school, set it right here. So I'm going to go down to Set Options, For Employee Data. I can set the start of the pay week. This would be mostly for the purpose of calculating overtime. Scheduling type, again, schedules is a separate webinar because it includes both employee schedules and child schedules. So we're not really going to touch that right now, but you could set your schedule type there. What we are going to do is for pay period types here, I'm currently set to every two weeks starting back in 2009 because it would go on and on on one of 18. So if yours is every two weeks, you could click in here and you just pick Let's say it started on a Sunday way back when. You got a 50-50 chance. Pick the fourth. And then go ahead and save. And if you click on pay period type, look at pay periods, I'll either be totally correct or I'll be off by a week. Let's say I was off by a week. I can come right back here. I'm just going to pick the other Sunday. Save. Click. And I would have my pay period set correctly. If you have something other than every two weeks, most every possibility is here. It's either every month or maybe it's twice in a month, in which case you need to just declare the beginning of it is from, let's say, the first and the next period would start maybe on the 16th. If none of these possibilities work for you, you can select custom. And I'm going to click right back here where it says pay period type and then custom periods shows up. If I pick custom, every single pay period could be a completely different pattern. I'm going to pick the start dates of each pay period, and I would start at the beginning of the year and go through the end. You want to go through the beginning of the year so that when ProCare calculates payroll, we look at the number of pay periods, and if you started in the middle of the year, there aren't a lot of pay periods. So if you do custom, start at the beginning of the year and fill in the entire year. I'm going to exit out of here and actually go back to every two weeks with some Sunday at some point. And then uh, we're going to go down a little bit further on this to the time card options. You can set the maximum daily hours before you'd get a message when they go to check out where it would say go see director. You can restrict to schedule. If you're interested in restricting to schedule, Go to ProCareSupport.com and type in Restrict to Schedule to get an article on that. There's very few people who do it because it makes the system very, very tight. And if you routinely want one teacher to go cover another teacher's area, restricting to schedule is not going to work that well for you. Rounding clock in and out. This is for the check-in program. Right now, I am set to exact time, closest none. If I wanted to round to the nearest 15 minutes, I'd click on this plus, and it's set to closest. I'd click on that line, and I'm going to say 15. The same for the out, closest, 15, save. I now have it set to round to the nearest 15 minutes. So if I clock in at 5 minutes to 8, it would say 8. If I clocked in at 7.45 or 7.47, it would round it back to 7.45. Calculation for overtime. Most states are going to be 40 hours a week. I think everybody is. And some states, possibly two states, where this is currently true, where over eight hours a day is calculated. That's all there is here for this portion of configuration. The balance of configuration for employee data is going to be under accounting management, employee data. And basically what you've got is set your pay codes and which of those are benefit codes. So I'm going to double click on pay codes. This is saying I've got a pay code of director. When I do expense something or I do write it out through payroll, that would be expensed to the 50-50 account. You can decide whatever these are. Talk to your accounting person if you have a question on that. 
And if you don't have payroll, it's not going to matter that much because you're not posting those pay code expenses out to anything unless you've got payroll within Procure. If you needed to enter anything new, you could enter the pay code up at the top. Again, you'd point it to a general ledger account. Does that pay code count as overtime? So you'll notice here, the things that are benefits, usually if somebody takes a benefit and then they work some more hours and the total hours for the week ends up being over 40, usually I would not pay them any overtime. So for instance, if I took a vacation Monday through Thursday and on Friday I worked 10 hours and Monday through Thursday you put me down for eight hours of vacation each day, well, then I'd be at 42 for the total, but you're not going to pay overtime typically on a benefit hour. So these are unflagged. Maybe you've also got somebody who somehow is hourly, but you don't pay overtime, in which case you could unflag that. The active is simply whether or not you're able to choose this in the interface in the future. So all the pay codes go here. I'm going to exit out of this. Of those pay codes, I'm going to double click. Those that are benefits, paid or not, I would put in here. So for instance, here I'm saying my vacation pays at 100% of whatever I had checked in the employee's pay code. When you set the employee up, there's a little benefit box. This says, I am going to pay vacation at 100% of what checked in the benefit box for that person. Let's say something wasn't paid and you simply wanted to track it as a benefit. Well, I could enter zero. So I'm still tracking training and treating it as a benefit. It just happens to pay nothing. And maybe something else might pay 50% of their normal wage. The check stub portion is just whether or not they're going to print the balances on the check stubs. If you have payroll in Procare, this would say that I'm going to print the amount of benefit that I have still on vacation. Not having it checked means I won't select it. 